What's happening? Brian Tong here with the Apple Byte. It's everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. And we know some of you have been able to play around with the new Apple TV, and some of you are still waiting to make a decision on it. So let's see what the Apple Byte's best product reviewer thinks. Oh, thanks, Brian. Okay, guys, so check this out. This is my quick review of the Apple TV, really the things I like and dislike about it. So let's start off with the likes. Number one, the UI and the touchpad interface are smooth, it's buttery. I love using the remote. Navigating around it feels really tight and it looks fresh and new. That's one of the things that I love about the new Apple TV. Secondly, the potential of the App Store. Now, it's not there yet, but we've seen apps like QVC, which really gives you an interactive TV experience. Then you have games like Jetpack Joyride and Crossy Road. This is just the beginning, but this is really like having an iPhone connected directly to your TV set. And then thirdly, I do like the Siri search. You can drill down into TV shows and movies by actor, by genre, by the year that the movie was made. That's really cool. But then if we transition over to the flip side of things I dislike, Siri is great, but it doesn't work across the entire OS. Apple says it's coming to Apple Music in the future, but they really need to make it work with everything that the Apple TV has to offer. And then of course, Apple's walled garden really restricts you from getting other content from great things like Sling TV for a TV subscription or for Amazon. You can't do that because Apple is really controlling its own ecosystem. That's always going to be a negative. And then thirdly, this does feel a little rushed. And what I mean by that, the Apple remote app on iOS devices isn't compatible with the Apple TV. Uh, you have the podcast app where people subscribe to podcasts, audio and video that normally syncs to iTunes. That's not currently available on the new Apple TV. And then also Bluetooth keyboards where you would use to search and type in your credentials. That's not compatible right now. So although I do like the Apple TV, it does feel like it's a little pushed out there earlier instead of polishing up those minor things. Overall, I do like the Apple TV. I love the new UI. I think the App Store potential is going to be huge. And if you're in the Apple ecosystem, this is really a nice upgrade for you and it's only going to get better. So there you have it. Thanks, Brian. And you know what? It's a nice shirt you got. Thanks, Brian. And you know what? You have pretty good taste yourself. All right, and other tidbits for the Apple TV. It's already 3D compatible out of the box. Games from Pangea Software like Bugdom and Nanosaur are already working in 3D. You'll just need to turn on that feature with your 3D compatible TV, but the actual games have to be made to support it. Now, Pangea is offering a developer tutorial for adding 3D TV support, so that's pretty sweet. All right, some of you have complained to me that Siri on TV OS doesn't work in your country yet, and you know what? You're right. It's currently limited to eight countries on launch because it needs to be trained for more accurate pronunciations with a wide range of TV shows and movies out there. Now we know iOS supports 15 different languages and over 30 countries. Apple says TV OS support for more languages and countries is incoming, but they didn't have a specific timing for availability. And the official Plex app is now available for Apple TV, giving its loyal users more media streaming options with their Plex media server. Okay, a 9 to 5 Mac report says Apple will start selling the new 12.9 inch iPad Pro on Wednesday, November the 11th. Apple's retail staff is expected to finish their iPad Pro training on the 6th, with the Apple Pencil and keyboard case also being available on the 11th as well. Now see, that's just a week away, and yes, I am excited for it. The Apple Pencil will also now ship with an adapter, which will allow you to charge it using a standard lightning cable, according to 9 to 5 Mac. The adapter will fit over the end of the pencil, and it's also the same side that would go into the iPad Pro, so if you wanted to you know, hold it up like a protest sign, you could still do that. And in the latest iPhone rumors, KGI Securities Analyst Ming-Chi Kuo believes Apple still has a 4-inch iPhone that resembles the iPhone 5S in the works. The phone is expected in the first half of next year with an A9 processor, but will not have the latest 3D touch. Now, Quo also says the iPhone 7, yes, we're talking about it, based on this report, will come with an upgraded A10 processor, and Apple will differentiate between the two screen sizes, with the 4.7-inch model having the same 2 gigs of RAM, while the larger iPhone 7 Plus will have 3 gigs of RAM. Again, this is all rumor and speculation, but Quo has had some pretty reliable intel in the past. And the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office granted Apple a patent for a low-travel keyboard design that uses force touch-like sensors to measure the pressure placed on its keys. The patent details how the keyboard would have a switchless keyboard mechanism that would help cut down on the height by removing physical switches that are on current Apple laptops. This would also help make their MacBooks even thinner, and we know how obsessed 
Apple is with making things as thin as possible, but users would need to get used to losing the tactile feedback they get from a traditional keyboard. This doesn't mean Apple is planning on implementing this, but it's where Cupertino's thinking is at. And if you want a little piece of Apple art from iconic painter Andy Warhol, start saving up now. So the buys or so the bees or so the bees, I know what it is, will be auctioning off a contemporary Macintosh painting from Warhol featuring Apple's old rainbow logo placed between the words Apple and Macintosh. The acrylic and silkscreen canvas painting will start at a measly $280,000 and is estimated to receive between 400 to 600,000 US dollars at auction. Like I said, start saving. All right, that's gonna do it for this week's show. You can send me your questions and comments to the Apple by the CNET.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the Apple.